This is KGW News at Noon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. Downtown Portland has really been a beehive of activity as protests against police brutality enter their eighth week. Here's what we mean. Photographer Beth Nakamura from the Oregonian took the photo you're looking at here. More than a thousand demonstrators were downtown last night. It was one of the largest crowds we've seen in about a month. Later in the night, we saw new clashes with police reporting protesters spray painting the federal courthouse. Some people also used hammers and crowbars to pry the plywood off of boarded up windows. Police say protesters also lit a fire near a door on the courthouse. Federal officers used tear gas, flashbangs, and other munitions to try and disperse the crowd. There were also these peaceful protesters. It's time for us to show up and just be a part of this. Those local dads are now joining the moms that we've seen at the protests. The dads who organized this are wearing the orange, and last night they marched from the waterfront to the federal courthouse and the Justice Center. Many told us this was their very first time coming downtown to demonstrate. I love our country, and I, I'll fight to protect it. And if that means showing up and being a part of this peaceful movement, it's the least I can do. A lot of the dads that we spoke to say they condemned the violent acts by some of the protesters and called for demonstrations to remain peaceful. In response to the presence of federal officers in Portland, Mayor Ted Wheeler is sharing this open letter to Attorney General Bill Barr and Acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf. Wheeler calls for the immediate removal of the president's rapid deployment unit and also asked for a congressional investigation into its tactics against demonstrators. Mayors from Seattle, Atlanta, Chicago, Kansas City, and Washington, D.C. co-signed that letter. President Trump is defending the federal officers and praising their actions here in Portland. In the meantime, the Department of Homeland Security is planning to send 150 officers to Chicago and possibly other cities with Democratic leaders. Oregon senators and members of Congress are trying to stop that. They're introducing a bill to prevent the administration from deploying federal forces in American cities. Oregon's attorney general also suing several federal agencies for their use of force and for allegedly arresting people without probable cause. Now to your coronavirus coverage today. The U.S. reported its first confirmed infection six months ago today. In that time, we have seen the huge economic impact on our communities and businesses. Today, top Democrats are meeting with White House leadership to negotiate a relief bill. As Tracy Potts tells us, there are some big disagreements on how much to spend and the best way to help Americans. Hammering out a deal to stop coronavirus, fix the economy, and help Americans who haven't had a paycheck in months. We're going to make sure that we don't pay people more money to stay home than go to work. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin opens talks with Democrats today on Republicans' trillion-dollar stimulus, including extending extra unemployment, which runs out next week. President Trump wants to fatten workers' wallets by cutting payroll taxes. It doesn't make any sense when so many people don't have a payroll right now, first of all. The president may cut funds to the CDC for testing and tracing the virus. Republicans are focused on stopping lawsuits and paying states to reopen schools. In ways that are as smart, safe, and data-driven, as possible. Today, President Trump resumes daily coronavirus briefings. I think it's a great way to get information out to the public. He's trailing Joe Biden by double digits. He has no idea what to do. He's zero. It's only one thing he has in mind. How does he win re-election? His own political crisis in the middle of a national catastrophe. President Trump shifting strategy on those daily briefings as polls show most Americans aren't satisfied with how he's dealing with this crisis. Tracy Potts, NBC News. We talked to the Multnomah County Health Officer about the COVID situation here. Dr. Jennifer Vine says the county reported 120 new cases over the weekend, and that is a record high. The problem is multifaceted. 
She says the feds aren't delivering testing equipment and supplies fast enough and contact tracing is going slowly because once people get tested, it takes a while to get the results back. Here's how Dr. Vines describes the federal response. I would say uh, at this moment, if there is a specific national strategy um, that is forward looking, I, uh, I'm, I, I am not aware of it. Dr. Vines also said the spike in cases can't be blamed on just one thing, such as the protests or the 4th of July holiday. She says it's likely caused by people getting out and doing more things socially or returning to work. California has canceled all high school sports statewide until at least January, and Oregon and Washington could follow that lead. This comes as coronavirus cases increase across the country. Oregon leaders are set to make an announcement about high school sports this Friday. Washington has already canceled all summer practices and could decide to cancel sports in the fall. Well, we will find out in just a few hours whether home delivery of beer and wine is here to stay. The Oregon Liquor Control Commission will vote on it this afternoon. The OLCC gave brewers, winemakers and distillers the OK to start making deliveries this past spring, but it was a temporary thing. Today, the agency will decide whether or not to make it permanent. Businesses say those home deliveries have been an absolute lifeline during this pandemic. We'll let you know how that vote turns out. A lot of restaurants uh, were barely surviving. Um, and this has been a blow that a lot of people will not be able to sustain. It's, it's too devastating. It really is too devastating. Portland restaurant owners fear the worst as the pandemic intensifies. They worry about what another shutdown could do to business and really the industry as a whole. Morgan Romero talked to them about navigating takeout, dine-in, or both during our new normal. Let's face it, this virus isn't going anywhere. In fact, cases are only continuing to surge. A lot of restaurant owners in Portland, like Reynada's owner in particular, are fearful that the county will have to go back and close in-person dining. And if that's the case, Portland's restaurant scene may never look the same again. This is all I've done my entire life. On the central east side, Sandra Arnrich uses food to bring joy to people's lives. Especially when times are this hard, people need to find comfort. She chose to fire up the oven and reopen Renata for a limited dine-in out on this patio. But what happens come cooler months when she can't seat people outside and COVID cases keep climbing? I don't know how comfortable I personally am working in an enclosed room with the heater going and people in it in, you know, a 400 degree oven going and everybody wearing masks. Say worst case scenario, state leaders decide to shut Multnomah County down again. Then what? And I'm sure that we will adjust in some way uh, or, or maybe just take a break. It's a potential reality a lot of restaurant owners. Well, I would say that we are still in stage zero. Like Jinx's Courtney Holbert have to plan for. I'm almost positive it's going to happen. And I think that we've been building our model around that potential. If I had done dine-in and had to go back, it would be not only um, financially devastating, but emotionally, psychologically, personally damaging, and for the staff as well. A few yards away, Yakuza owner Dana McGurlin says if Multnomah County shuts down again, any chance of keeping restaurants open goes out the window. It's going to be hard for people to go back and forth. Like if I go back, I think I probably will close my doors. This is our time to capture any kind of revenue this summer. And I think come September, we're going to see so many places that just really cannot continue. Many of her employees still don't feel safe. People are still not feeling comfortable coming back to work. For that reason, Lakov wine bar owner John Howes didn't pop any bottles once regulations rolled back. It just seems like a lot of effort to be punched in the face again. And he doesn't plan to anytime soon. It's just not worth risking somebody's grandmother to make $25 on a glass of wine. Restaurant owners say without government relief ASAP, that joy we once found inside the walls of Portland's restaurants will be out of reach. No restaurant, wine bar, 
hospitality industry should have their back against the wall when the government is so willing to help out other industries that are directly related to them making more money. Morgan Romero, KGW News. So other than the wine bar, the restaurant owners you heard from are still juggling takeout, trying to bring in some business. They may be forced to stick to that if Multnomah County reverses course. Boy, tough situation. Let's switch gears for a second, take a live look outside on the Oregon coast. It's cloudy, it's kind of foggy in Cannon Beach. Temps definitely cooler there, not so much around here, although that is starting to change. Joe Ranieri has a first look at your forecast. Oh, Brenda, the one thing you won't have out there this afternoon is the heat. We'll stay warm, but you're not going to be seeing temperatures in the low to mid 90s like we saw yesterday afternoon. Here's a live look over in wine country from our Stoller family estate camera. A lot of sunshine for the afternoon. We'll be looking at temperatures jumping up into the mid, maybe the upper 80s in a few spots. So as we go throughout the later part of the afternoon, you can kind of see where those temperatures will trend right around 84, maybe 85 this afternoon by three, four o'clock in the afternoon. The east side of the state, that's where a lot the heat is going to be over in parts of eastern Oregon near Pendleton. Don't be surprised if you're looking at temperatures in the mid to the upper 90s. And then by tomorrow, we're going to usher in some changes. Those changes are going to be some cooler and cloudier conditions out there, especially along the coast. Daytime highs tomorrow will only be in the mid to the upper 70s in a few locations. You stay dry, but you'll definitely notice the cooler trend out there. And coming up in the detailed forecast, we'll talk more about when we'll be seeing another warm up. All right, thank you, Joe. Still ahead, summer camp looks very different this year because of coronavirus. How one local group is getting creative and offering some summer fun and safety. Plus, In-N-Out Burger has a cult following, but there is not a restaurant very close to Portland, at least not yet. What we're hearing about a new franchise close to home.